Hi, my name is Maggie Carrier and I am a lead instructor at Kids Code Jeunesse. Jeunesse meaning youth. Before we begin, I'd like to say a word about the organization. We are a bilingual Canadian nonprofit who wishes to give the opportunity to kids and teachers from all around the country to learn more about programming, artificial intelligence, and computational thinking. Now the question is, what is computational thinking? You might even already use it on a daily basis without noticing it. You can obviously use it in problem solving, but you can also use it in a variety of challenges. You apply it through four main strategies, decomposition, abstraction, pattern recognition, and algorithms. These strategies are closely intertwined, but do not need to be applied in any specific order. And the word computational makes it sound more daunting than it really is. And as a whole, it can become a powerful tool in your everyday activities. But now the question is, if computational thinking is something that we use in everyday situations, like let's say drawing, why is it called computational thinking? That's because if you want to get a computer to do something for you, either to draw or show an animated story, calculate something, or anything else computers can do, these strategies are the building blocks for making it happen. Computational thinking is the tool set we use when we translate our human ideas into precise instructions for a computer to carry out. Those instructions are called code, and we'll get into those in the next module. Now, let's look at how we can apply computational thinking to a very simple task, drawing. In the following image, we will see Marianne, who wishes to draw a house. She thinks about how she's going to draw it, and this is where computational thinking comes in. First, she uses pattern recognition through her memories. She thinks about her own house and what it looks like. She also thinks about other houses she's been to, her grandmas and her best friends. Then she realizes that each essential part of a house is generally linked with a geometric shape. The rooftop, a triangle. The walls and the door, rectangles. And the windows, squares. While she thought about all of this, she identified the elements that she already knew and applied them to her drawing. She then decomposes her challenge. She knows that a house has essentially four parts, walls, windows, a door, and a rooftop. She's breaking down the house into smaller parts so that her drawing challenge becomes more manageable. Marianne applies a part of abstraction as well because she wants to focus only on the essential characteristic of a house. It doesn't matter if it was made of bricks or wood. It doesn't change the fact that the essential parts of it were walls, windows, a door, and a rooftop. Finally, Marianne also uses a set of algorithms while drawing her house, a type of formula or logical way to draw it. She actually started drawing it in one spot where it will be on the ground. She then drew the front wall to establish its size. She added the rooftop to establish its height. And finally, she added a set of windows and a door. This is what computational thinking is. You have a challenge? Use the four strategies that are at the core of computational thinking to accomplish it. With this tool set in mind, you will be able to solve simple but also very complex problems. While you learn about programming in the coming modules through the use of Scratch and Microbits, you will be able to apply computational thinking while you create projects, decompose the problem you will encounter through debugging, identify the essentials of your code and program it step by step using a set of instructions. Let's do an unplug activity in which we will apply computational thinking. Here's Mr. Robot. It needs to reach the ping pong ball. To do so, it can solely rely on the precise set of instruction given by you, the teacher. Take a few seconds to examine where both Mr. Robot and the ping pong ball are placed in the classroom. Write on a piece of paper each instruction to allow Mr. Robot to reach the ping pong ball. Pay attention to the words you are using. Note that Mr. Robot will execute exactly what you say. 
This is a simple activity you can do with your students to teach them how to communicate effectively. Have fun!